I'm Marilyn Priel. Welcome to The Better Part. Our program is about a boy born and raised in California. He enjoyed going to small schools in San Jose, then mostly a farming community of many ethnicities. He joined the Boy Scouts, grew up to work on his father's farm, paid taxes, and was active in civic affairs. It was a happy, hard-working time. Then one morning, a neighboring farmer came to his home and told him that Japan had attacked Pearl Harbor. Five months later, he and all his family, his parents, two brothers and sisters, were in a fenced relocation camp with armed guards for persons of 1 16th or more Japanese ancestry, designated as enemy aliens, even if they were native-born Americans. They were stunned with disbelief, fear, sorrow, and outrage. Our guest is 92-year-old Ichi Edward Sakawe. He's written a very beautiful and comprehensive photo history book about his time in that period. He has also been influential in establishing and maintaining the Japanese American Museum in San Jose. Please join us with our most gracious guest. To the better part, a program by and for seniors and devoted to exploring the many facets of those better years of our lives. The name of our program is inspired by a quotation from Robert Browning. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be, the last of life for which the first was made. We went to the Japanese American Museum in San Jose to gain some information about the Japanese internment. And we're extremely fortunate to meet a founding member who granted us an impromptu interview. Please meet Mr. Ichi Edward Sakawe. I was born in San Jose 92 years plus ago, January 25, 1912. I went to a grammar school, one-room schoolhouse. The teacher taught all subjects, including manual training. I went to junior high school in, here in town, then to the senior high school, which I participated in various programs. Then I went on to junior college here, who at that time was San Jose Teachers College. After uh, graduating junior college, I went back uh, on the farm and became a partner with my dad. Your parents, were your parents born here? My parents came from Japan at the young age of 26. And later on, uh, my dad came here in 1900. And by prearranged marriage, my mother uh, is married in 1911 and I was born in 1912. I am American citizen by birth. And uh, your farm uh, was must have been a very successful farm then. Well, our farm, I wouldn't say successful because it's very difficult farming. Uh, if you have a crop, you get nothing. If you uh, don't have a crop, the price is high and you got nothing to deliver. Uh, farming is very hard gambling trade but when you get it in your blood you like to see the crop grow you like to see the uh, crop harvested and sent to the market especially when you grow quality crop when the war broke out in Pearl Harbor uh, he came over and told us the bombing of Pearl Harbor and that what a big tragic it must be but uh, you know, my Dad was, mother was out in the field already, and I was uh, one of the sleepy heads, I guess. I got up late, and he told me about it. So I told my folks uh, what happened, what I heard from, from Ed, and they were really shocked. We were ordered by uh, a sign on the telegraph pole 
in stating such a, that all persons of Japanese ancestry must uh, be ready to go. Uh, the civil t wartime civil control administration was set up here at uh, San Jose State Gymnasium, whereby we registered and got our family number. Each family had its certain number, and there was a tag that has to be placed on our lapel or uh, so they can see it. And uh, that's how we, uh, we were kept track. Well, Western Defense Command took over under General DeWitt, and they sectioned off uh, what area goes on, has to be ready to evacuate uh, on a certain date. We here in North San Jose was chosen May 30th to be ready to be evacuated, and uh, uh, that was the last contingent in here in Santa Clara Valley. Just before uh, this order came, I was wondering how did they know where these people of Japanese census were located. 1940 census that they took uh, knew the whole family history and where we lived and what we did and how old we are. So they had, they had no problem of rounding up uh, persons of Japanese ancestry. So what were your thoughts? Did you, did you feel like you were going to have to be there during the the entire war, or and were you afraid that you'd be mistreated in the camps? Did, what what went through the minds of of you and and most of your family? Well, this is something unprecedented, and uh, we have never heard or of any group of people being herded together like animals in order to uh, board the train to unknown destination. Uh, and uh, it was difficult to even think that we are being shipped somewhere. Uh, I always thought that we were just treated like animals being loaded on the car and uh, shipped somewhere un unknown. The trauma that went through me uh, was really something, uh, because nothing was said to us as to what our future would be. We didn't know what to pack, where we're going, and what to expect. Did anyone try to um, jump off the trains, or did, did any people try not to turn themselves in like they were supposed to? No one has uh, disobeyed orders, because we're under... Uh, these two guards on each train and uh, it was I don't know we were just uh, hypnotized to the fact that we just have to abide by the terms uh, did anyone even tell you where you were the name of your camp or anything uh all night long, we rode the train. We didn't know which direction we were going, north or south, or east or west. And with our shades pulled down, uh, the guards on both ends, they were uh, not talking to us at all. And we arrived in Santa Anita Assembly Center or Santa Anita Racetrack. When we arrived there, we discovered that we were at Santa Anita Racetrack and we were uh, our suitcase were examined against uh, again for contraband and other articles that were not permitted to take into camp. Uh, we did not know what to take, and r simply the reason is that fact we didn't know whether we were going to a cold climate, warm climate, or mild cl climate like we are here, and the clothing. Uh, they didn't specify at all, so we took our everyday clothing 
and discovered uh, in California was all right, but those people who were uh, turned in at Arizona or Manzanar or Wyoming uh, did not have no proper clothing. And then had they hastily built, you said you were in a racetrack, had they hastily built uh, barracks for sleeping and, and bathing and, and food, that sort of thing? Uh, at Santa Anita, they used the horse stalls, and they built some new barracks. The barracks were made out of uh, fresh wood, and the, as days go by, the floor would, would uh, show cracks, and there's a considerable draft coming through the cracks, and we had to suffer all those co uh, cold nights. While in the uh, stall area, it may be cozy, but the odor of the animal uh, was terrific for anything. We were just uh, like animals uh, talking among ourselves, but not getting any information as to our destiny or our, our, our we lived from day to day. I was at the San Diego Assembly Center for, for approximately three months. Then I was ordered to pack up and get ready to move again. They did not tell me whether we are going to warm climate or warm, cold climate. They said just pack up and get ready to go. So uh, we packed up and waited and got on board the train again with shades pulled down, guards on both ends of the coach, and we just traveled uh, three nights and four days to unknown destination. Fourth day, toward the evening, we landed in Wyoming, and there's no sign of streets or anything, just a highway, and uh, we were wondering, where are they taking us? We could not see any barracks or anything because the barracks were on the higher plateau, and finally the truck arrived to take us to each uh, unit. And that's where, when we found out through uh, previous uh, arrivals that we were in Wyoming in a camp called Hardbound, Wyoming. When you were in the camps, people were in the camps, didn't they have uh, duties, tasks that everyone had to perform? Well, in the camp, it's relocation center, it's one mass of people there. And we have to support our, ourselves. We had our own uh, bylaws and government approved by the Water Relocation Authority. Uh, otherwise, we had mess hall uh, workers as well as uh, other uh, janitorial and food services. It was all run by personal Japanese ancestry. The Caucasian personnel uh, just supervise and see that uh, things are run. So it was uh, very well, well run because we had our bylaws, we had our meetings, and all that uh, took place in a short time, and we lived by it. We had our own program for our students' uh, activities and uh, extracurricular activities also. So it was very well planned. Though, so you had some uh, uh, school lessons for the children then, a, a place for the, the young children to go and get some education? Yes, they provided schools. Uh, in the assembly center also at Santa Anita. Santa Anita, when I was a Caucasian uh, personnel uh, shuttle bus driver, one morning I picked up uh, Mary Knowles' sister, and Mary Knowles' sister asked me, what can I do for these youngsters? I said, these youngsters had just been uprooted from the uh, middle of the term, and uh, they have no reading materials, or books or anything. 
Uh, we have all sorts of uh, talented instructors from BAMA to a doctor, but they had no material. So they were writing on the walls of the grandstand uh, with chalk, trying to illustrate their lesson. Well, and then we got to uh, the relocation center. It was a little better because they had built schools in the barracks and also in the uh, high school it was built. But the reading material uh, was very scarce. Uh, I have a lot of things that I'd like to say. Uh, the personnel, Caucasian personnel I worked with, were very compassionate at Heart Mountain especially, and uh, uh, they treated me very well. I held four jobs. I was uh, also uh, chairman of the evacuees. Uh, I held that job. I had a difficult question to answer. Uh, in other words, during the uh, uh, Induction period. Some refused to go for induction, and they, and uh, because their pride, uh, their American citizenship rights were denied. And they asked me what I, uh, how I stand on the measure. And being chairman of the block managers is very difficult time for me, but uh, I said. Let your conscience be your guide, because I cannot tell you uh, what you should do or not to do. Uh, I myself felt that the rights of American citizens were denied. And how long were you there? I was there for two and a half years, and we were. I was the first family after uh, before the coast was open on January. Second, 1945, uh, I was uh, applied for a permit to return to California, and permit was granted to me 15 days prior to official announcement of all persons of Japanese ancestry may return to the Pacific Coast. So, when your family uh, returned, um, was there st uh, land and homes still there, or had that been? Uh taken away? I think we were one of the most fortunate families because our neighbor was of German ancestry and he had served in the World War I. When he served in World War I, he had an invalid mother uh, who needed uh, care and uh, he was so worried that we had told them that his half-brother would help her to get up and uh, we would take care of her the rest of the day, and which we did because we were neighbors that helped each other. Uh, I would t we would take vegetables and different uh, uh, homegrown things over to the family. And uh, also during the harvest season, we had one horse, and they had one horse. So we pulled our horses together and tied to the wagon, and we were just uh, helping each other. All our neighbors were of different ethnic background, but we were just one family helping each other. How, what was the condition of your farm and your house when you returned, and how soon did it take to get things back the way they had been previously? I think we were the most uh, fortunate amongst the person of Japanese ancestry because this couple of uh, German ancestry did everything possible to, uh, to protect uh, all our belongings. Uh, when I came back, he had made inventory of all the equipment and uh, Articles, and he says, "Here is the list of all the equipment and articles. Do you want to check them through? They might be slightly worn, but they're here." Uh, I think it was 
very, very fortunate that uh, we were able to come back and start the next day. And they had kept up the farm uh, just as if we would kept it up. And they did a marvelous job. It seems almost uh, like a fairy tale, but it is a true fact. They're, they're just kind at heart and very compassionate. What was your feeling when you walked through your front door for the first time? When I came uh, home and uh, I came to the front door and uh, and knocked on the door, here comes my old dog uh, called Bobby, and he wouldn't even bark. So uh, my friend who stayed at the house uh, didn't know that I had returned, and he was really surprised the dog wouldn't even bark. The dog would come up to me and and sniff at me and wag his tail. So uh, my dog remembered me. And um, the the other uh, families in the area, you said, didn't have such an easy time of it as you because they didn't have this good neighbor. How how many people do you have? Do you have any idea how many residents in the area actually lost their property, or their homes, or their businesses? Well, it's a very sad story uh, because a person of Japanese ancestry had sharecropped or leased a parcel of land, and they farmed on that particular land, but they did not own the land. Therefore, when the order came out, they had to dispose of all their belongings those who did not expose, uh, dispose of their belongings stored in uh, storage sheds or homes or friends. But most, I would say, good, good percentage of the evacuees in their families have lost everything that they had. I was wondering, how long it, did it take those people who had lost everything to find homes and jobs, and did they have to take uh, jobs uh, different to what they had had previously? Well, you know, uh, persons who were at prime age when they were uh, evacuated and put into a concentration camp, they've lost all interest in coming back to farm again. And they were not young men anymore. And they did not have any place to go or uh, to live or uh, to move in. And they were homeless people. So we here in San Jose, you know, when you come back, the church group and I and a few others have got together and uh, found a place where they can stay and uh, rest for a little bit and find a place uh, to live or to find jobs. The older people, uh, was very, very difficult to, to find a job, but the young people uh, were able to find a job, but uh, they had to find a home. Uh, it was a very sad in situation for the older people uh, who are ill, uh, incapacitated. They were just thrown on the train and brought here and put into these county hospitals, and they were just laying there uh, day after day. I had visited them several times. It was really sad because they had no friends and no one to speak to. Uh, that trauma that I had gone through, I can remember to this very day. It brought me tears how our fathers, grandfathers uh, were treated. Is it something that you carry with you every day, all this experience, or are there months and years that it's forgotten? 
the experience I have gone through is really embedded into me because I was 30 years of age at the time and I was very much interested in history. And uh, I kept uh, notes, I uh, kept records, and uh, that is the reason why uh, I may be able to remember a lot of things. And it was really a uh, trauma for me. I've sent the pictures I've taken to Walter Cronkite one day, and Walter Cronkite says, hey, you fellows are having a beautiful, wonderful picnic in time. I says, no, think about the their fathers, their mothers, their grandmothers. And they're really, uh, the trauma they've gone through is terrible. So Walter Cronkite says, uh, I think I better change my film and call it Pride and Shame. And it did come over the network, Pride and Shame. Is there anything else that you can think of that we, we need to know? I think the uh, trauma we've gone through, the experiences we've gone through, uh, should never be forgotten. It should be uh, remembered and uh, taught in school what we had gone through, discrimination as well as uh, hatred. And I think that we should be able to work together and very compassionate. Thank you very, very much. Would you look at that camera really good so we can get a really good picture of it. <laughs> I know. Cheers. The title of Mr. Sakawi's book is Heart Mountain, a photo essay, a reflection on the Heart Mountain Relocation Center. If you would like more information, you may contact us through the Cupertino Senior Center at 408-777-3150. Our website is www.thebetterpart.com. The Japanese American Museum in San Jose is located at 535 North 5th Street. It may be reached by calling 408-294-3138. We're happy you joined us and come again.